So, hello everybody. Here we are again. Hello, good evening. And we hope you're doing fine. And we, uh, we liked uh, yesterday's little format of um, doing a bit of live uh, lectures here or live little broadcasts about learning Hebrew together. And we thought uh, today to try something a little bit different. Today we wanted to talk about the Hebrew word Amen as we say in English, right? In Hebrew, we say Amen. In English, Amen. But the word actually exists in, I wouldn't say in all languages, Eti, is that right? But it exists in a lot of different languages all over the world. For sure in the monotheistic languages or in the languages that are influenced by monotheistic uh, religions such as Islam, Christianity and Judaism. But I think it might even be existing outside of those realms. I'm, I'm not sure at the moment. Do you know anything about that? I heard it in different or several languages uh, beyond Hebrew and English. So, uh, right. So it, perhaps it's also known. Uh, it's. I think it's a word which is at least known. Acceptable. Yeah, right. Acceptable. It's a, yes. yeah. So yeah, today we wanted to talk a bit about the meaning of the Hebrew word, Amen. Amen. I put up here um, the first slide in which we see the word, Amen. Yes, and. Uh, First of all, we have to ask why people, when they wish something or they pray for something, they also seal their prayer or their request with the word Amen. This is a very interesting uh, to look at. The word Amen is composed of three letters, Aleph, Mem, Nun. And the value of the word Amen is 91 because Aleph equals 1, Mem 40, and Nun 50. Together they create the number of 91. So uh, if I may interrupt you, um, you say the numbers, what what numbers? Maybe that's uh, for beginners not clear why okay. these letters the um, Hebrew, have numbers. Yes, the Hebrew alphabet is composed of 22 simple letters and uh, four uh, ending letters and together they create 24 uh, 27 letters sorry and each one each letter stands for for a number for a for a certain order so in this case aleph always implies or hints at the unity mm -hmm. or the crea creator of the universe Right, this is why it's one. The first this letter has one the number one, right? One, mm -hmm. yes. And Mem uh, stands for 40, the appearance in time. And Nun also in, in this life. It means in this life. So 50. we have one plus 40 plus 50. Yes. From the infinity, this is what the Hebrew people, I did not put it into card yet, but when we say Amen, we mean the abbreviation means El Melech Neeman. Could you meaning translate that maybe? El is towards the loyal king, meaning we direct our request to the loyal king, the king of the universe. Right. El this is why it is used to seal prayers um, yes. all over the world, yes. this word, yes. right? As, yes. a, as a formula. Yes. So, but um, does it have any meaning beyond just being like a folkloristic um, thing that just people say, why do we say amen, right? If you would now go to church and ask the priest, hey, but why do we say amen? He would just say it. That's because we this just say it, right? Yes, that's, that's how, how it is. people say it. But I mean, does yeah. it have any, any reason? Is there, is there something else behind it? Yes, the sages are telling us, and now we can see the next uh, picture, please, uh, to look at the second chapter of Genesis, in which we return to the Garden of Eden, and in the Garden of Eden, if we can see this slide now, we have two trees. Mm -hmm. The tree of life, the source of everything, and the tree of knowledge, which according to the biblical language is the tree who, I say who, it's not who, which, the tree makes, which, yeah. which makes fruit. The tree so of knowledge makes fruit? Yes. Is, 
could you say that? How is how is it uh, in in Hebrew? Um, how is it identified? Osepri. 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 Yes. Osepri. Yes. Okay. And so it literally means makes fruit. So it's written that the tree of knowledge, which I think it says in the original, um, allows to see the difference between what is good and what is evil, right? Mm -hmm. And it says it's osepri. Osepri, because the Bible says in the third day there is etspri. Etspri, meaning the, fr <laughs> the, the, the fruit, because ets in Hebrew, now we go to a very, very distinct uh, distinction. It's very hard to catch it in the first time. Right, this is it why it I'm took, asking, it because it's, it's uh, a like bit confusing. It took us several years yeah, yes. to, to catch it. Yeah. Yeah, so. the, the Bible in the third day speaks about Etz pri. Etz in Hebrew is a tree. Etz pri, it means fruit tree, mm -hmm. simply. It means that at the beginning, the fruit was inclusive in the trunk itself. It did not have to go out of the tree like now we see apple hang on, on a so branch. In the beginning, before, mm -hmm. the, the, <laughs> before the sin, the, there was, the, there was a, a notion of etzpe. But after the sin, there was a separation. Ah, you mean before there was the tree of knowledge and the tree of life, there were no two trees, there according to the story? There was only one. Ah, there was one. only one tree. One tree. And this tree had a potential of the potential, giving fruit, yes. But it was yeah. not, in a sense, that it was was revealed that it was coming out externally, that it was expressing yes. itself. It was, like yes. you say, embedded into the trunk, so to yes. speak, right? It yes. was yes. right in its essence. This yes. tree had the potential to give fruit. This is the word, the potential. This is it. This All is right. the keyword of this yes. okay. <laughs> conversation. Yes, and then after the the sin, there is like tree of knowledge makes fruit now because the bible uses the term osse osse pre and what does it mean osse doing or makes fruit because doing or making is mechanical it's not in the potential we, we moved from a potential to to the actualization so the tree of knowledge makes fruit Machen, in German, from like in Hebrew, mikan, from here. Mm -hmm. It's not the tree from there. The tree of life is the tree that from here makes fruit. It, uh, if I may, may say something, mm -hmm. it sounds a bit like strange to me at first, because one would think that the tree of knowledge is usually associated with something bad, right? Like people mm -hmm. say um, Adam and Eve, they took from the tree of knowledge and then everything went bad. I'm simplified a little bit, mm -hmm. though, right? So it seems strange that this tree has any fruit at all. If it is that bad, um, and um, does the tree of life have no fruit? I mean, it would seem to me that in, in a kind of simple world, the tree of life is the good tree and it has lots of fruit and mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. is fine. And the tree of knowledge is kind of like uh, not mm -hmm. eatable or not recommended or something mm -hmm. like this. Uh, it, the, the distinction is... Uh, let's say is in let's say the visual because it's the tree of life the fruit is part of the whole picture it's in the complete picture but the tree of knowledge the tree of knowledge the fruit is external we can pick up the fruit we can separate by picking the apple or any other fruit by picking and this is only illustration when when mm -hmm. we speaks about the we, when we speak about the trees in general that makes that make fruit we can pick it up we can put it in our hand and separate separate the fruit from the tree right so the tree of knowledge is its essence is to the separation so does it say is, that the tree of life has no fruit at all excuse me for interrupting no 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 the tree in the tree of life the fruit is also is already inclusive in the tree itself so as in the previous tree that existed before there was a separation into two trees yes yes the tree of life is there was i mean it's it's hard to explain this co it's it's hard to explain the concept but there is one only one tree 
people, it's hard for people to accept it, but there's only one tree, the tree of life. When we separate things, it becomes the tree of knowledge. When we speak about warm and cold, bad and good, night and day, this is already a distinction, this is the dualism. There's, on, there's only one tree. When we make the separation, the way we view things, we cut it. We cut the tree of knowledge from the tree of life. Is that clear? I, I think you, you explained this uh, very nicely. So the whole idea in a way that the story that there used to be one tree and then this tree got split into two trees and then the human being ate from the bad tree, quote unquote. All of this is in a way, this, the way of looking at the story like this is a consequence of eating from the tree of knowledge. Would yes. you say that's an acceptable yeah, way to put once, it? Yeah, once people eat, the, the thing is that, what was the sin? To eat from the fruit and by eating, let's say a person, when he eats an apple, so he sees a nice apple in the market, he buys a few apples, put them in a nice basket, put it at home on the table, he eats an apple. The thing is when a person eats an apple and tastes it is so tasty and it gives another bite because it's so tasty he forgets that this tree and uh, this um, apple is not the only thing behind the apple there's a tree which is planted in the ground which grew a few years which is watered by the rain mm -hmm, and warmed mm -hmm. by, w by the sun which was created or planted by the creator Right, so it's there's like a whole process in a there's way. There's a whole process when people disconnect the the pro the product from the process. Let's say the mm -hmm. apple is the product. It's very interesting that in the the Hebrew uh, language, the word fruit puri has the gematria of two hundred and ninety, which is same value of the word tsar, narrow. narrow. So to, once we take only the fruit, we narrow everything down to to the, how do you say, result. Right. This is why this is associated with the uh, original sin, so to speak, right? Which is all of a bit, as you've mentioned, quite a complicated topic to get into. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we can, we can get back to how is that all related to the word of amen? Mm -hmm. Maybe we can move to the Might next, I just put up uh, the next slide here? Yes. Okay. The name, the name of, okay, the name of, of the Lord, as we know it, is written in four letters, and which we don't pronounce. Right, this is this tricky thing, right, for people mm -hmm. who first get into all of this and say, ah, in Judaism it's forbidden to say the name of God and otherwise something terrible will happen to you and maybe, I know this is another very complicated topic, but perhaps mm -hmm. you could just um, speak to this very quickly. Why is it that this name of God in the Hebrew language is not being pronounced? We, because it's impossible, because it's the speed of light and we, we, we talk in a spe speed of uh, like sounds how the sounds travels and the sounds is uh, slower than than the light so we shall never no human being is uh, capable of doing this right so it's not that it's forbidden and that it's like a moralistic issue of no 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 you are forbidden to say no, the name no. of the, uh, the lord no every every time when there is a thing which are forbid on us the bible forbids us doing things it's not because you'll get your punishment as a four-year-old child. It's just impossible. Right. It's just impossible for us to do or to achieve. Mm -hmm. This is this is simple. So the name, the name of the Lord is written with four letters, and Yod He Vav He, and when we give the this name the value, the numeral value of each letter, we get this equation right so ten, like uh, yes, 10 is the yod right mm -hmm. hey 
the, is the five. second letter from the right is five. Yes. Then we have Vav, which is, just looks like a line. This mm -hmm. is six. And then we have another He, which is yes. also five. Yes, and because if we add Hebrew, them all up, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, because in Hebrew we, we read from right yeah, to left. Yes, these are basics, but I think it's yes. important still to yeah. to repeat this for people who might just uh, be in the beginning of their mm -hmm. learning journey. And the sum of those letters gives a, gives us the number of twenty six. This is very important to know because the name of the Lord in a mercy face equals in a way 26 or whenever we see the number 26 it implies to the name of the Lord uh, of the Lord in the face of mercy this sounds complicated I'm not sure I fully understand this and I okay. think some of our listeners are maybe with me on this well, what do you mean okay. the mercy face uh, of the Lord because sometimes we when we experience uh, mercy we, we in our daily life sometimes we experience judgment and resent and sometimes we experience mercy either from us to the world or from the world towards us right this this makes sense yeah. so when we feel mercy or we we feel we feel that somebody relates to us with mercy we can see this how the the name come appears to us the name because this name the tetragrammaton is is the tree of life is related to the tree of life which has infinite mercy mm -hmm. no judgment at all so it's like we have this idea sometimes right of like god as a conception of like a figure in the sky or something in order to understand what you're talking about we we maybe have to to put some distance on this whole thing right yes. so what you what you seem to be describing is that god so to speak from a hebrew perspective is not um, necessarily something personalized but more it describes the nature of reality Yes. So if, if I understand you correctly, so sometimes the nature of reality is, um, seems to us to be more in the face of judgment and mm -hmm. sometimes more in the face of mercy. Yes. Which we don't really know why or when or how what yes. we do is related it's to not, it. It's and, not right? linear even. Right, it's exactly. A, you, know, you cannot say that right. I did that and I got that and why. And it's, perhaps there are correlations, but uh, these are things we, we might get into step by step. Okay. And this is uh, the name, the name of God, the Tetragrammaton relates or implies to the tree of life, which is seen as the number 26. Mm -hmm. And now we can slowly move to the next slide, right. which will I show us up here. another slide. Mm -hmm. we, we could see another aspect. The name that we see now on the slide is Adonai, which is my sovereign. And this name, when we pronounce this name, we mean when God is sovereign on earth. Right. Not the potential, but the actualization. And I, I have to say a little story because I wrote a little post about this in the morning. Mm, Why do we ahead. say? Adam and Eve, while they were eating from the tree of knowledge, they, they got a bit puffed and about themselves and what they know, and they forgot the origin of things. And in order that, and they disconnect, disconnect themselves from the, the source, from the origin. And in order that we live here and not forget and correct their eating, their first eating from the tree of knowledge, whenever we eat we bless Baruch Ata Adonai and so and so we continue when we say Baruch Ata Adonai we mean bless you second person present my sovereign meaning by every eating that we do or drinking we include the origin but as a second person, like he is present in our life, we don't forget him. We eat 
like Adam and Eve and forget who, who made all of this possible for us. So when we say Baruch Ata Adonai, bless you, my sovereign, we mean God is present in this moment of eating and drinking and we connect the eating and drinking to the source. Right, and as a quick um, grammar aspect perhaps for people who are just um, looking at this for the first time, um, Adon is also like a, a sir, right? A in sir, a normal master. Hebrew language. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, and if you say Adoni in Hebrew, this is uh, mm -hmm. sometimes a mistake that um, mm -hmm. learners make, that they say um, to someone, hey, mister, um, my sir, mm -hmm. um, they, you can confuse the two very quickly, mm -hmm. right? So if you'd say yes. sir, hey, mister, it would be Adoni, Mm -hmm. And Adonai would be my sovereign in the divine yes, sense. So divine this is something sense. to keep in mind when you're visiting Israel mm -hmm. or you're um, mm -hmm. learning uh, Hebrew a bit. Interestingly, the name Adonai is related to the tree of knowledge. The tree which makes fruit. As we say before, I know it's a very complex topic and we cannot enter it at once because we have to repeat step by step it. we have a lot of From time there is no, angles, no broadcast yes. limit on facebook so, we so <laughs> do more of these lessons so step yeah. by step so i repeat again the tree the tree of life is sim uh, it comes as or appears in the name of mercy like the tetragrammaton 26 and the tree of knowledge appears in the name of adonai which has the value or the volume of 65. Right. So here we again have, I'm just going to go through it slowly, right? Yes, Aleph yes. from the right to the left mm -hmm. has the value of 1. Then we have the letter Dalet, mm -hmm. which has the value of 4. four. Then we have the letter Nun, which has the value of 50. And at the end, we have the little Yod, which has the value of 10. Yes, and together those letters, they create the number of 65. The question is, again, we shall have to always return to the first core. How does why? it connect to, to Amen yes, also? Yeah, yeah, right? why? How does it connect? Yeah. <laughs> Can we slowly move to right. the next I'm slide and we should connect okay, yes. uh, all of this together because it seems fragmented reality, so it's not. <laughs> yeah, it actually, there is a connection. <laughs> yes. Believe it or not. Yes. So when we wish or people pray in synagogue or in churches or in, in, in their heart or among friends. They, they have amen parties, yes. They, they want to actualize things. What happens in, those, uh, in, in the process of wishing and sealing with the word amen? There is a connection. We create a connection between the tree of life, which is there, the origin, the image of which all reality streams, and the tree of knowledge, which is from here. We create a connection, again, between the tree of life and the tree of knowledge, which is here. And while we're connecting, we see here the relation in numbers, because the tree of life is symbolizes by is symbolized by the number 26 the tree of knowledge is symbolized by the num number 65 and we create we connect those two trees the potential and the actualization the tree of life which is from there and the tree of knowledge which is here with the word amen because Amen is 91, and when we connect the tree of life and the tree of knowledge together, you see they give the sum of 91. This is why we seal every wishing, every prayer with Amen to actualize the life that coming from there, that we, they will appear here mm -hmm. in our life, in our actions. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I see. I see here how the name um, has the value of twenty-six, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, the word Adonai has the value of sixty-five, mm -hmm. and those two add up to ninety-one, which mm -hmm. is Amen. Yes. You mentioned that twenty-six is also the value of the tree of knowledge. 
Of life. Of life, sorry. Of And life. the 65 is also the value of the tree of knowledge. It is a symbol, a symbol. How, how, so how does that work exactly? Is uh, Maybe it's too complicated to get into it mm -hmm. right here, but how do you associate the number 26 with the tree of life and the number 65 with the tree of knowledge? I'm just curious. Is that also simple adding up of letters or is there something else to it? How, because in the book of Zohar, we read that the infinite mercy. What is the infinite mercy? Is the tree of life. Everything is life in there, the potential. Everything exists there and it appears in the name of tetragrammaton and it's simple because we see the tetragrammaton is 26 right and the tree of knowledge is always related to this world what do so you mean this is this why world? Uh, they say adonai in prayers yes, because yeah. but for us it appears as it appears here yes there is a king right there is a king Above us, the and we are not the king, right? <laughs> we, the we're not. This is this is the correction. <laughs> this is why we always say Baruch Ata. I mean, they say in the books Baruch Ata Hashem, the Tetragrammaton, the Tree of Life. But we, since we cannot say the the name, we say his title here on earth, Adonai. It's it's another complication, but right, right, it okay, but I understand that it uh, came in yeah. the previous uh, conversation before mm -hmm, this lesson. Mm -hmm. um, yes, what we did you want to ask? Right, I, I think you you explained it more or less um, how the twenty six stands for the tree of life and the sixty five for the tree of knowledge because they are, mm -hmm. these are dis different aspects of reality, so to speak. Yes, because whenever we eat, when we say we we bless and. Because what uh, what is eating? Eating is not just physical eating, like like to eat a, a sandwich or a fruit. Right. Or I mean, today yeah. it's a very complicated topic for many people. Like it's very dietary, and mm -hmm. there are politics involved. With we should speak about this later right in our uh, conversation yes, uh, about the meat eaters and how important it is. But uh, to to keep the covenant between man and God, very important. But uh, it is whenever. I meant also something. Eating is not just physical eating. Eating is already think, things that we capture in our um, our mind. This Basically. is very interesting because mm -hmm. a person is not get nourishment only from the physical. I once heard said that the Hebrew word ochel, mm -hmm. right, to eat or mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm actually is very similar to the Hebrew word for call, for, for everything. Mm -hmm. It's true. So I heard it said, I'm not sure where it was. It was one of the sources somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I read it maybe, I'm not sure, um, one of the Midrashim or so, mm -hmm. uh, that when a person eats, mm -hmm. this is actually how he relates to everything. Yes. So, and there is a, there is a little story also about this that If you would show a person all the food that he will consume in his whole life at once, this whole mountain of different meals, he would from say baby, no. From baby, from baby until... Yes, yeah. yes. From age zero until mm -hmm. 120, right? Until mm -hmm. the maximum, as you say in, uh, in Judaism. But uh, if you would show a person all the potential, all the food, he would say, I'm never going to make it. It's, um, it's mm -hmm. impossible. It's impossible. Right? Yes. This, is, this is me and this is the relation mm. to everything and it's never going to happen. So, and then they, they explained how this is a way for us eating is to break down everything. Mm -hmm. Because we can't, a person cannot wrap himself around everything. So it gets for us, the reality gets dosage, so to speak, in mm -hmm. little bite-sized portions every day a little bit. This is true. Ochel, Aleph, Chaf, Lamed. You can write the, the word in, in two parts. Aleph, Kol, meaning the Aleph is everything. This is what uh, this mm -hmm, Midrash mm -hmm, means. Mm -hmm. so right. So we cannot eat the Aleph. We cannot eat the... We can't eat the universe in one no, go. No, in one go. So. <laughs> Although we might want to sometimes. Yes, yes. Okay, so... So it, does it, this conversation make uh, or pour a new light about this understanding? Why do we say Amen? I think your, um, your explanation is very interesting. And um, this is also the point now where I would like to ask everybody who is listening or watching, if you have any questions, um, 
please ask and uh, we'll try to to get to those uh, questions. I, I see, see here there's one question already. Um, how does Yod and Vav have the same value? Uh, they, I think they... they Oh, it's they already been clarified, yes, because... Uh, I think that Yod and the Vav, maybe they see it as a line in terms ah of Ah, yes, maybe I'll just switch Ma back quickly to the first, um, where mm -hmm. did we have this with the two trees, with the tetragrammaton? Yes, mm -hmm. here we can see this. So it's actu actually, they don't have the same value. They don't. They don't right? They, they look a bit similar, because if you look here on the right, this, this Yod, which mm -hmm. is just this little, this little tip, Yes, the tip, uh, the sources say that the yod is a tip, is like a drop. Right, this has a the value yod, of 10, right? Yes, and the yod is always considered to be a dot because we have Morse writing. And uh, I just moved to another topic to, ex to right. express this topic. In Morse, we, have, we can write letters by lines and dot. Is it? Mm -hmm. Short and long, yes. Short binary, and long, yes. yes, binary system. Here it's the same. We can write the whole alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, by lines and dots. Okay. In, to this word, I mean, the sources relates to the Yod always as a dot, a drop of water. A drop of water, like we, drop, we, we draw a drop of water, always the Yod is a dot, is the potential. Always the Yod implies the whole potentials because yod equals 10 mm -hmm. 10 is al always the the largest potential ever right ex uh, expressed and then we have again the hay which is and the vav is always six it's l just a line a hook which mm -hmm. equals six so it looks almost as if it's the same letter as yod just double so yes but the value yes. is half right yes so almost half one can understand how they, they look very similar. Yes, yes, right. it's good. Do you have other questions that you Let would like? Let me see at the moment. I don't think there are any questions, but it also does not matter if people have uh, questions and they see this, uh, the, the recording later, they can yes, always add their questions can, in the yes, comment and sections ask. and then we'll, we'll get to those questions in time. So thank you very much. I hope thank you all you. enjoyed this. Good evening and Shabbat Shalom. Goodbye. Bye-bye.